Alright, so in chapter 5 we get into differential leveling. We touched on it just briefly before in the, in the last chapter as we talked about how to transfer an elevation from one uh, object of known elevation to another object that you want to know what the elevation is. So we're going to go through here and, and discuss uh, uh, discuss how to do it, how to properly write the notes, how to uh, do any adjustments that we need to in, in the event that uh, we find errors within our in our level. So the first thing I want to make sure we understand is that, again, we're working, when we have our instruments set up, we're working in the horizontal line, in the horizontal plane. Uh, we're doing distances that are close enough that the curvature refraction shouldn't, uh, uh, shouldn't really matter, because we're not going that far off to, to make, uh, make any, any sort of difference in our leveling, in our leveling process. So first thing we need to understand is when somebody's holding the rod, you've got to make sure you hold it plumb. If you hold it like this, and you're not paying attention to what you're doing, you're going to find right here that you're going to read the rod higher than, uh, than what you should, which then in turn determines this elevation to be lower, maybe something down here, than what it really is. So you have to be really careful. When, uh, and that's just a, just a key, just a hint to, to help you out in the future. Differential leveling again. If, if I have an unknown elevation down here at uh, what we call another benchmark at Oak, and I have a benchmark uh, benchmark up here. This is where I'm starting at 2053.18. Uh, again, what that is is reference from mean sea level in this instance. So what I'm trying to do is transfer an elevation all the way down to here. By doing so, I can't just set up one one time. You, every time you set up, you have to set in a location where you're going to be able to see where you're getting your elevation from and where you're going to be able to establish it to on the next point. Uh, you can't just set it up here in the middle anywhere. You can't just set up right here because if you're running a level line, you can't uh, you can't get the elevation from where you're at before. So you have to be careful there. So in the process of doing this, we run what's considered to be kind of a loop. Uh, and, and and first of all, you know you set up here in the middle. You transfer an elevation to what these are called turning points, which are just temporary points. Uh, something fixed, something known, uh, that we really don't care about, because uh, really we only care about what's the elevation down here at the oak, at the oak tree down here. Okay, so you set up and you transfer the elevation to TP1, to tra um, turning point 1. Then you set up again, you then come here to turning point 2 and establish an elevation there. Then you keep moving to turning point 3, establish an elevation. And once you know this elevation, you add right here what your backside is. And then you get a foresight reading, and then you can establish exactly what that is. So here are the notes. Uh, now, I'm not going to just say here's the notes and you guys figure it out on your own. I'll give you an example here. To, uh, that way we can, we can go through it together. Not this exact example, but something similar so we can understand what it is we're doing. So let's, uh, let's pretend that we set right here. Okay, and now what we're trying to do is, if I, uh, if I have a benchmark over here, and I've got a manhole right here. I want to be able to transfer an elevation from benchmark all the way over to manhole. So what you end up doing is, you set up your, uh, your and we're going to go in one direction um, as we go through here. Set up your rod to make your measurements. Okay, so the first loop is the red, going all the way out here to establish an elevation at manhole. The second loop in blue is to go back and verify that what we did actually fits and matches. So first thing you're going to do, set up on benchmark. Let's throw all these in here. Okay, so you're going to read over here, read to there, read to here, here, back and forth to where you establish that elevation. And then you go backward, you do the exact same thing. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at this now. So if I had an example down here, I have a benchmark, three turning points, and manhole. What I'm looking to be able to do. First thing is I tell you what the elevation of benchmark is: 205.23. So this is an example of how you're going to be writing your notes and how we can keep track of the information that we've got on here. Set up your instrument. Put the rod on the benchmark because that's where the elevation is coming from and we're trying now to establish an elevation on TP1 first. First thing you do is you get a backside reading of 4.42. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to put 4.42 up there in the right column. From that, you're able to establish then what your height of instrument is, right? 205.23 plus 4.42 equals 209.65. So you see here, this is kind of the pattern we're going to go through. I'll get through one whole loop and I'll show you. Okay, now we go to the other side. We're going to measure a foresight. Foresight, we end up at 3.61. So now let's write down the information. You see where I wrote this? I wrote the 3.61 on the TP1 because the TP1 is, this is where it's first being used as a foresight to be able to establish elevation at TP1. All right, from there, as we talked before in differential 11, we can come up then with the elevation is, right? Start of the benchmark, had a backside of 4.42, so you go up to the horizontal, go all the way across, down, and you can establish that elevation. So in our notes here, we start at an elevation here, we add our backside, which gives us our height of our instrument, and then we subtract our foresight, which then gives us our elevation right there. So now if we continue on, now we have a backside, now we use TP1 as a backside. This is the first time we're using it as a backside. So now we write down the information which we have. So from that, we can come up with an elevation of the instrument. We get a foresight reading of 2.10. And then we can come up then with an elevation. So again, it follows that same pattern. So that's a plus there, equals here, minus this, equals 208.5. So let's continue on. So you get, keep getting all your measurements going all the way through this level site. And now you end up with the manhole. You get an elevation of what the manhole is at 207.93. So you think you're done. Well, we're nearly not done because all we've done is established an elevation, but nothing is really for sure. We're not certain. Maybe we made a mistake in the middle here that we didn't realize we did. So it's unverified. But what we can start doing, though, is double-checking our math and double-checking our work to make sure we did everything right. So the idea is you're going to sum up your back sites, you're going to sum up your four sites, and you're going to take the difference between those. Now you see that back sites are pluses and four sites are minuses, right, as we've gone through that and discussed that. So you're going to take all the sum of your back sites and subtract your four sites. You end up at 2.7. So now let's look at this. We had our ending elevation at 207.93. We subtract our beginning elevation. You should end up at 2.7. All this is is just a math check. That's all this is at this point because we've still not verified that our, uh, our elevation of 207.93 is actually correct. But what you've done now is provided the information to show that what you've done so far is good. This is your check to make sure that you did your calculations properly. If anything is off between these, then you've got to go back and find where your error is.